All right, back again, Luke here. And uh, today what I want to do is kind of make a, a bit of a video uh, talking about uh, different councils that many of you may have in your collection. Now, um, what uh, I've been doing recently, if you guys have noticed by some of my recent videos, is I've been taking a lot of the older machines that I've had, a lot of the machines that I've had kind of packed away, and I've been bringing them back out again to make some videos on them. Uh, some of the machines, like for example with that Famicom Titler, uh, also with my uh, Wonder Mega, I went and brought that out and I tried to make a video on it, but uh, one thing that I've noticed recently with a lot of my machines, especially the ones that I really, I don't know, I kind of hold high value to, uh, the ones that I kind of keep locked up when uh, I shouldn't, uh, I've noticed that a lot of them aren't working exactly the same way they were when I put them away. So uh, one thing that I kind of recommend, and that's the reason why I'm making this video here, is to basically, uh, if you're a gamer, you know, just game. <laughs> so go back into your closet, you know, go up into your attic, go into your garage and see if you can find those systems that you packed away long ago and uh, dust them off, uh, plug them in and see how they work. Now, if you remember the uh, the Wonder Mega, unfortunately that thing had a dead laser in it. Um, it started to work really well, but then, uh, yeah, it just suddenly started locking up and it didn't work at all. And then the... Um, the drive itself, the drive motor for opening and closing the door, that wasn't working so I had to replace the belt on it. Uh, when I put it away it was working fine so it's one of those things where you know if these things don't get used they kinda deteriorate over time so I have uh, the Wonder Mega sitting here waiting for a new laser interestingly enough with the uh, Famicom Sharp, uh, Sharp Famicom Titler I plugged that in and uh, I put in a game and as soon as I turned it on um, I noticed, okay, the buttons aren't really working. And then I realized, okay, number two button is actually start on the uh, the machine. And when I hit number two button on the one player controller, I noticed that it put in two players and uh, player two was just firing at like a thousand miles a second. And player one, you couldn't use any of the controls. And then, you know, once again, button two was pause. I thought, well, this is really weird. Why would this machine, you know, just suddenly start acting like this? And lo and behold, what it was is um, I took apart the controller and uh, the pads for the start and select and uh, up and down, they had actually kind of uh, stuck to the circuit board itself. So what it was doing is it was making some weird contact and uh, every time the system started up, it was like uh, if you take one of the old N64s and you're holding up on the joystick when you go and turn it on and then, uh, or even with the GameCube you do this, um, and then you hit the on switch or your messing around with the joystick when you go to play the game itself you'll notice that the controls will be all off and all wacky and stuff like that and then you'll have to reset it and try and play it without uh, touching the controls while it's loading and then after that you can touch it kind of the similar type thing so what I did is you know it wasn't anything super challenging or anything but trying to figure out what was going on with it you know when I went and put it away like I said there was no problems with it but it started to act up and I thought wow this is really odd but just took them apart just clean the surface a little bit uh, took the pads off of them, cleaned them up, and put it all back together, and it works fine. You know, I was able to make that vid on uh, Crisis Force, so it was no big problems. But what I've been noticing recently is uh, a lot of these systems that I keep pulling out, each one of them seems to have some sort of like a uh, little trouble going on here. And uh, what I recommend is, like I had mentioned just a few seconds ago, uh, go out into your garage and your attic and grab some of those old machines that you haven't played in a long time and dust them off. Uh, plug them in and uh, especially if they're belt driven, something like that, make sure that they're still working right. Clean off those lasers, clean off those mechs. And if there is any problems with them, uh, I recommend trying to buy the parts now. Uh, you know, if you take a look at some of these machines as it is already, they're about, what, 20, 30 years old? In some cases, they're even older. You know, if you start going back to, like, uh, the Atari or even, you know, further back than that, you, uh, you can probably see, okay, a lot of these game machines are getting much and much older, and uh, the parts for them are becoming less and less. So... What I recommend, you know, like like I had to go through here with my Wonder Mega, I was lucky enough to find one laser mechanism that was for sale, and I searched for a long time trying to see if I could find one for this machine, because it takes a specific uh, laser mech, and if you don't have that, you know, the machine pretty much, it's, it's a Mega Drive, you know, and, you know, the door will open and close, but you can't really do anything with it, so... Um, right now, I wanted to try and get that laser mechanism, and it cost me about $60 just for one laser. But um, I know that if I were to wait about another five years, if I would have left this thing in storage and just left it, you know, on 
uh, on its own in a plastic bag and then brought it out one day and it didn't work, my odds of trying to find a laser for it would probably be that much less and uh, the price would be that much more. So what I'm recommending to you guys here is go through your old machines, make sure that the lasers are working right. If by any chance the lasers aren't working right, uh, I remember to I recommend going over to eBay and checking out uh, eBay to see if you can find the laser part number. Just take out the part, uh, look at the side of it. Usually it has a, either a sticker on it or it has something printed on it and see if you can find the part for it. If it's something that's belt driven, see if you can find another belt for it. A lot of, uh, of these belt driven machines, you can get a replacement belt out of an old like floppy drive, something like that. I know it's probably not the best, but uh, definitely don't recommend using rubber bands as those things really give out quickly and uh, they disintegrate very easily. So try and find a replacement belt for it. Um, sometimes you can find them at hardware stores and things like that, but uh, try and replace it and uh, try and get it up and running. One, one other thing that I can recommend too, especially with belts, is that for some machines, you can get away with swapping them around into other machines. What I mean uh, about that is, for example, if you find a belt for a, uh, what is it? An Xbox, original Xbox. If you find a drive belt for an original Xbox and the, the belt inside your Xbox right now isn't working, like it has a little bit of a, a dip in it, or something like that, like I had shown you on my uh, Wonder Mega video, you can actually use that belt, even though it has a little bit of a dip in it, and you can use it to replace um, a belt in a uh, GameCube, a Panasonic Q, uh, for example, that has the, the disc tray that opens and closes like that. Uh, the Panasonic Q uh, belt, even though it may be stretched out or worn out, can be used as a replacement belt for a Wonder Mega uh, door. You know, that's something that I was able to, you know, work in there and, and fix, and it works great, you know. But unfortunately, right now, what I have is uh, I don't have a, an extra belt from a... Um, from an Xbox, you know, but I do have, uh, you know, something like this. I was testing this today, and this is one of my Panasonic Qs, and as you can see here, you can see that the belt is uh, is loose. It will open, but the door sticks, and I really have to kind of pry it out a little bit in order for the door to open. And then once it's open, yeah, you can close it back up, and then you go to eject it again, and it's like slipping. So what that is, is it's a belt issue, but I, I didn't know this until I went and plugged it in again, so... When I go and uh, put these machines away, usually they're working fine. There is no problems with them. But after a while of just sitting, uh, temperature uh, differences, um, like humidity, uh, being in storage for a long time, not having any sort of movement on the parts, the belts and the gears and everything, they kind of lock together. And uh, even the grease and stuff like that, it dries up. So what you may find sometimes, which is uh, a really kind of dangerous and sad situation, is um, sometimes you'll have broken gears or broken parts. And uh, to give you an example of that, here is, uh, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this or not, but uh, this is a part out of my Wonder Mega. Now, when I got this Wonder Mega, the thing was bare, I mean, just bone dry. So I, uh, I greased it up, I put it back together, and I realized, okay, when I go to put in a game, it tries to read the disc, but the laser isn't really moving back and forth. And what it was is the, the rails had dried up so much that uh, when the laser mechanism did try, or when this motor that's in here, it did try to push it backwards, it wound up uh, snapping the teeth off of it. So, I don't know if you guys can see this here. There's uh, some gray... <coughs> I don't know if you guys can see that there. There's some gray teeth on here. And what I had to do is, those teeth were missing. I actually made those teeth out of uh, JB Weld. Like I said, I, they're right here. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not. I made those teeth out of JB Weld and I filed them down. Um, I had to hand sculpt each one of them using a toothpick, using a Dremel tool, using a small file in order to make those teeth back because there was none there. It was just a big gap. So, And all that was is basically from having dry rails and then trying to put a disc in and having the laser mechanism try and move back and forth. And instead of uh, the laser mechanism just sliding back and forth, what it did is it put a lot of pressure on these gears here and it wound up snapping the teeth off of it. So some things to keep in mind and some things to go and check out with a lot of your uh, different systems 
it, uh, it costs maybe, what, a couple of bucks for a tube of grease, and uh, it may take you about an hour or so like that in worst case scenario to grease up everything and then put it back together. But that's definitely going to save you the time and hassle of having to replace gears or make gears by yourself or go out and buy a new laser mechanism or, you know, in worst case scenario, maybe both. You'll have to, you know, make some gears and buy a new laser mech just because it didn't get very much use out of it. It dried up and a lot of the parts hardened up and things like that. Uh, also with ribbon cables, uh, with lasers or anything that connects, keyboards, um, like controllers, things like that. When you when you open the system up, if these, if it's not working right, you know, make sure you open it up, remove the ribbon cables, and then resurf it, uh, put them back in. Uh, you don't have to do any sort of like cleaning on them unless you want to, but you just plug them back in. Usually all it does is just take a little bit of reseating and that'll work fine. That's a trick that a lot of people have learned, um, including myself with arcade boards. Uh, sometimes you'll get an arcade board and you'll see a lot of graphical glitches. And all it is really is the uh, the EEPROMs or the little chips in there that are sitting inside their sockets. They just haven't been moved in a long time. They've created some corrosion, not the same kind of contact. And uh, all they need to be is reseated. Uh, very similar to one of those cassettes or uh, game carts if you have them for uh, you know your game cart systems if you were to leave it inside the system and leave it there for a long time and then go to turn it on sometimes you get graphic glitches and you just take it out clean it up and put it back in same kind of thing so basically what this video is is uh, a lot of me rambling but it's uh it's something that uh, I think is probably something you guys should do if you uh, if you can you know take out those old machines give them some uh give them some playing and uh have some fun with them you know go and check them make sure that they're all working right it's actually uh something that was brought up to me or brought to my attention too uh, by another youtuber who had sent me an email and said hey luke you know i got a garage or i got a uh, um a closet full of game systems that are packed away um i've got a, a sega wonder mega that's been packed away and I'm worried about my systems. You know, what should I do? Give me some advice. And I just said, you know, basically take them out and play them. You know, uh, we're not getting any younger, and these systems aren't getting any younger either. So uh, it's better to, you know, have fun with these things while you can. You know, when you're 70 years old or something like that, it's going to be really difficult to do the eye hand coordination. And uh, you might regret, oh man, you know, when I was younger, I wish I would have played this a little bit more. But now all you can do is just sit there and look at it. It's on a shelf or, well, I still got that in a box. You know, why? You know, <laughs> just play it. <laughs> Bring it out and do what you can, you know, uh, play some of that. <laughs> But, um, you know, hopefully this video helps you guys out a little bit. It's just something that came to my mind. And um, it's definitely, um, you know, something that I'm going to try to do more often. I'll bring these systems out a little bit more. I still have, uh, for example, a uh, first-generation Sega Mega Drive or Mega CD. That's uh, the one that sits on top of each other. And I know, almost 90% sure, that uh, the belt drive for that is probably going to be a little bit hardened or it's going to be difficult for the tray to open up. Who knows, even the laser in that might be really bad. So I might have to go and pick up a laser for that and a belt. I'm not sure. But um, that's one of those things. I took out one of my Famicom disk systems and uh, I plugged that in after being sitting around for, geez, I don't know, about uh, a good five, six years when I did the... The, um, the repairs on it and uh, luckily enough it just fired right on so I was pretty pleased about that I thought yeah all right <laughs> you know <laughs> I was able to to do some uh, really hardcore work on that and keep that going but then some of the easier things like uh, small belts on uh, these machines here like a, a good example being my Panasonic Q just you know gave out and uh, they're not working the same way they should but yeah so Key points, uh, the key points of this video, just get out your old machines, something that you haven't played within, you know, if you haven't played it within a couple of months, chances are it's got a, a lot of dust on it. If you haven't played it in years, chances are it's caked in dust, and uh, it's going to take a little bit of work in order to get it running again. So, you know, take that effort, go and try and clean up the contact points, clean up the uh, AC adapter, clean up the AV cables, do what you can to get all the parts, you know, cleaned up, looking well. Put it all back together and uh you know make sure it, it works and uh by doing these small little maintenance steps you know you do them once every couple of years if you want to or uh you know once a year something like that at the end of the year uh, in japan they have this end of the year cleaning you know which may sound pretty ridiculous uh throughout the year everybody does clean their house right but at the uh 
the end of the year, they they have this huge cleaning thing where they take everything in their house, move it around, and they clean every single part of the house, you know, on, from top to bottom, and make the thing kind of spick and span at the at the beginning. It's just perfect, it's really sparkling, and um, that's something that it, they they do here to kind of prevent the dust from building up, and that's something that you should do, especially with uh, some of your game consoles too. Make sure that you get it all cleaned up and uh, working right, and then you can put it back in storage. You know, but pull it out every once in a while and make sure that uh, your gaming stuff is really working and uh, that you'll still be able to enjoy it uh, come maybe I don't know another five, ten years or so when you decide to play it and uh, put a game in and make a couple of gaming videos. Who knows? But yeah, that's about enough rambling for me for right now. Just figured I'd uh, bring that to your attention, you know, and uh, hopefully help a few of you guys out. And I'll definitely be making some more videos here. I got a whole bunch of stuff, you know. I'm going through some of the older games that I have sitting around here trying to see which ones I haven't made videos of, and uh, I'm going to I'm gonna play these games. <laughs> that's what they're meant for, but yeah. Yeah, so uh, like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching. And if you can see in the background here, you can see some Super Smash Brothers. Now, this is something that uh, I had to repair. This is an old Super Smash Brothers game that I had. And uh, the Smash Brothers game had a, uh, a couple of rotten traces on it. Very similar to, if you guys remember, I went and fixed up that Earthbound cart for uh, Legend, uh, Legendary K2. It was a very similar situation. It's a game that I've had sitting around for a long time. And I was thinking about, oh, you know, one of these days I'm going to get to it and see what I can find out what's wrong with it. And sure enough, underneath the, uh, the chip, I found a couple of traces and was able to repair them and got this thing going. And uh, in the background here, you can probably see a little bit. This is, uh, this is, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Night Trap playing here with the, uh, the cheesy acting. This is, uh, you know, fantastic. This is one that I just received here, which is pretty awesome. That's one gift that I wasn't expecting. And that's playing on the Laser Active player right now. So running through that system and working great. You can see the uh, the colors are all off and stuff like that, but it uh, it is working, you know. But once again, taking out these old games here um, and giving them a shot. But uh, just figured I'd share this with you guys here. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys find this a little bit entertaining. <laughs> see if we can turn this up a little bit. This is uh, all in Japanese. <laughs> しかし、あのうちのものは<笑><笑> I'm really happy to have this one going again.